What's up, guys? Good afternoon. Once again, thanks for joining us. I'm Captain Nick, Captain Keith. Just wasn't a one-time thing here. We are real people, and we're in the same place, ready to talk about boating tips live. As you guys know where to find us, right here at Marine Max Leisure, Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online, Twitter at Marine Max. Doesn't get much simpler than that, but we're here to talk about all things boats. And of course, drop your questions and comments below. This is a live show, so a big part of it is all the questions and comments, which everybody that's been participating, thank you very much. Absolutely, man. Everybody chime in. It helps us out too a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does, just so we have stuff to talk about and we just kind of start blabbering. But Today we're going to talk about something very serious, alcohol and boating. I know, I know everybody does it. It's, it's you know, it, a lot of times it seems like it goes hand in hand, especially in the summertime, especially in the in the sun, in the heat. You know, that's what you think. You got a cold one in your hand, you know, toes in the water. You, you know, you know, you know, it's in the sand. So, yep. But it is very serious, especially with Fourth of the July weekend coming up. We've got some tips, some statistics, and of course, Captain Keith, Sober skipper advocate. We're going to talk about that a little bit too. Yeah, um, yeah just kind of getting into that. I was fortunate enough to have been appointed to the North American Sober Skipper Advisory Council. Um, originally, there was a group of 12 of us. It's expanded to 19 now. We just took on seven, seven more members. Um, it's a group of us that just basically want to help. We're trying to devise ways to increase the awareness of the effects of alcohol and boating have similar like to mothers and against drunk drivers. Um, the Sober Skipper's been around since I think 2015, but the Sober Skipper Advisory Council, we just started that back in 2019. Um, if you give me a second here, I just gonna kind of give you an, a brief rundown on what the Sober, the CETO, Sober Skipper Foundation is all about. Um, the program's goal is to eliminate boating under the influence by encouraging boaters to take a pledge to designate a qualified sober skipper. If you go to boatingsafety.com slash sober skipper or a designated skipper, there's a form on there you can actually fill out and you're taking a pledge to be a sober skipper on your boat. You're going to zero, zip, zero, zilch. You're not going to drink when you're on there. Um, your friends, your guests and all that stuff can go out and, and do what they want to do. Um, when you do it too, you can request, you can get some of these little sober skipper wristbands it says I'm on board. Um, the program, it's a positive proactive awareness campaign just to, to, to try to, um, you know, just enforce the, the non-drinking non part. Um, also wear life jackets, uh, know where your safety gear is and all that. Boating involves wind, noise, a bunch of other accelerators. So people, if you, you know, you might throw it through back and hop in your car and go, but you drive your car every day, you know how everything works. You might only get on your boat once or twice a month. You've got a bunch of other stuff going on and it affects you a lot worse. Um, the sun, the heat, the waves, the noise and all that, it's gonna et cetera, It's gonna make everything be a lot worse. Um, alcohol is the leading contributor and factor in boating accidents. On average, 111 people die every year from boating accidents. Totally senseless, totally avoidable. Yeah, so, that, so, that's, so that's the thing, Keith. This is something that is 100% preventable. Yep. So it's, it's a pretty big chunk of, you know, the fatalities and, and all the accidents total. And then plus, I mean, in the summertime, there's just more boats out there, period. And obviously there's going to be more alcohol, you know, going hand in hand with the fun and the sun and, 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 and more often than not, it's a recipe for disaster. So. Yeah. And interesting enough, uh, a lot of the, the boats and the drownings are in smaller boats. Mm -hmm. uh, statistics show that it's males between the ages of 24 and 56 on a trailered boat um, in 14 to 26 foot length. But then you think about that, that's on the trailered boat. So then they're going home, back to the boat ramp, then getting in their cars, and then driving home on top of that, too. So um, there's just a lot, you know, a lot to it. Um, the Sober Skipper Advisory Council um, is, let me give you a little rundown on that. Um, in, or, in addition to promoting safe boating, uh, we also came up with the uh, first ever, first annual National Boating Safety Awards. Um, it's going to be an annual thing. It uh, encourages boaters to designate their sober skipper for leaving dock. Um, 
but it's also about uh, recreational boating organizations promoting and, and uh, safe boating. So last year, there was five different categories. Uh, Marine retailer, Marine Max actually won that. Um, number one. Number one. Marine manufacturer, Sea Ray Boats, stepped up and came in there with that. Uh, we have Marine Media, which is Bonaire Corporation, magazines, you know, boating magazines, sport fishing magazine. Um, and then the Marine Marketing and Outreach uh, Award went to Yamaha Outboards. And then us on the Sober Skipper Advisory Council created a separate award for the actual Sober Skipper Award. And that went to Freedom Boat Club. Freedom Boat Clubs throughout the, through the whole country. But what they've done is they actually have all their members at the time of the boat before they depart the, the slip, take the pledge to designate a Sober Skipper on there. It's cut way down on their, you know, service bills, accidents, repairs, let alone, you know, their insurance rates and everything else have dropped because of that, because they're making people, you know, do the little, uh, you know, pledge to not be drinking on board the boat. So it's a, it's a good program and, and kudos to them for doing that. Cool. Well, good stuff. We've all taken the pledge. I definitely recommend doing it. It's uh, the number one way, like we said, 100% preventable. So it's, it's all about being in control, especially when you're out on the water. You can't always control what everybody else is doing. But the one thing you that came in uh, broad, broadcast is interrupted we're still now we're back all right just roll we're back we're cool nobody panic i know you guys are probably really worried but, but <laughs> we lost but, but we're here so but we're, we're okay so a couple questions from last week one nick from florida shot me a text keith this is probably more for you I can answer it too. Do you need to run your engines while flushing them after in the salt water? Okay. Short answer. In the old days, earmuffs, waking up your neighbors, making everybody mad, two strokes, smoke blowing everywhere, of course. And then nowadays, they say no on the bigger engines anyways. It's just a matter of hooking up to the adapter, running the fresh water, and I guess it's going gonna, it's gonna to flush out everything, and you don't need to start it at all. Um, sure. But – after our conversation earlier on those small engines where there's the adapter that goes on the back, you do need to run it. Yeah. If you've got the fitting on the, like the back cowling on the, the back side of the boat where it screws in there, those you do have to, to run, just give it a, you know, let it run at idle for 10 minutes or so. Um, rev it up a little bit. Um, if you're not sure, best thing you can do like anything is all your boats come with owner's manuals, pick a manual up and read it. You know, that's what they're there for. What else you got? How do you tie a bowling knot? Show them the right way, Keith. Well, and I'll show them the quick way. We'll get back to the alcohol here in a second. But so with a bowling, if you've got a line, the way I do it, I'll make a loop. The hard part, the, the tricky part is coming around so it comes around on top. Then there's the old saying the rabbit comes up the hole around the tree. So the loop, rabbit comes out from underneath, you wrap it around in the back of the part that's hanging down, and then go back in the hole, and then it's right there. So try this again in front of the screen. So loop, up, behind, and back in. Uh, if you go on to YouTube, Marine Max's Boating Tips videos, there's a two or three minute little video on there on, on doing those. I know you tie yours different. So I tie a flying bowling, which is nice for when you're kind of in a pinch. So what you do, basically thumbs out. Shout out Chris Corner for showing me this. And then it's a matter of, all right, I'm going to do this a couple times. Just like that. So when that's handy, a lot of times you won't have enough line left on you know length of line left so you can't do a cleat so this is kind of just a quick way to do that so i'll do it one more time you can wash it in slow mo a little bit later very easy once you get it once you do it a million times you just flip it around grab that boom flying bowling so a couple ways to do it so, so jennifer 
Jennifer Gallagher's on there. She's just got a question. She goes, uh, where we go? Let's scroll up. I guess I'm confused on the boating and drinking laws because I see friends on Facebook who are cops and they are drinking on the water and driving their boat. Are they setting a bad example or is there a type of if and or but to this law? Florida law states actually it's you got to be 0.08 to be legally impaired, just like in your car. Unlike in your car, you can have an open container on a boat. So absolutely is it perfectly legal to be driving along, having a Miller Lite or a Budweiser or a cocktail in your hand? Legally, yes. Is it prudent? Does it make sense? Is it going to impair you? Yes. So should they be doing that? Probably not. Do we, do they do it? Do we do it? You know, you, you know, you got to watch the, you know, the limit and know what your, your thresholds are. Right. I mean, there's, I mean, that's um, the thing. I mean, you're not going to, I mean, it's, do people, there's always going to be people drinking on the birds. How I like to do it anyways, if I'm driving, it's like not at all. You know what I mean? But everybody yeah. else has a good time. Yeah. If you're at a restaurant and you have a beer with your lunch or something like that, you know, wait an hour or so. There's a lot of great information on that boatingsafety.com website. And then also I've got stuff here. Some I don't know if we can see it good enough on here, but there's some statistics um, that I've read, went through this morning. It was pretty cool. If you go to U.S. Coast Guard, or not U.S. Coast Guard Boating, but it's uscgboating.org. And then it's slash statistics slash accident. There's all kinds of stuff on how they break down all the different, you know, uh, factors and causes and all that stuff. So there is, there's a blood alcohol percentage chart in there. So kind of depending on your weight and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just, you're better off not doing it. There's a quote on here too, on this Coast Guard website. Tips for avoiding BUI, boating under the influence. This, this kind of resonated. Boating, fishing, and other water sports are fun in their own right. Alcohol can turn a great day on the water into a tragedy of a lifetime. It's final. It's over. So totally avoidable. Those 111, 113 deaths per year, all, all avoidable. So no. Don't be that dude. Don't, don't be that guy. He's 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 got a life jacket on. I'll give him that. But I mean, they probably put that on him, huh, Keith? And uh, that guy, not not cool. Bad guy, having a very bad time. So at least he's got his life jacket on. He's got his life jacket on. So that's that. So I'm gonna pull up some common on. rumors here. On, nothing so, to do with alcohol, but we're out on Sunday and we we're swamped by an excursion. I mean, big wake wave. Came over the bow and swept the entire boat. We were going very slowly. Is there a right way to go over waves this large to avoid being swamped? That's Judy. She has a 230 SPX outboard. 230 SPX outboard. And let's see. She said she was not. They were going very slowly. Yeah, you want to try to don't take the wave directly on the bow if you can. You want to go at like a 45 degree angle. And as you, as you hit that trough, as you start to go down, so if you were going slow like the whole time and you came and it, and it came over, as you're going on that little angle, sometimes actually if you power up just a little bit, so it'll kind of roll up over the, the ride that crest up, then you hit the top that you can back back off, roll back down, give it a little acceleration. So basically you're gonna have two humps and then get back in the middle. But I mean, every boat's responsible for their wake. I don't know, you know, what the exact situations were and stuff like that. But uh, you're always responsible for your wake. Yeah, so good, good question. One other question here, John, who is responsible for the placement of no weight barrels in the state of New Jersey? I I don't know, do you know? <laughs> do not know. Do you know in Florida? Nope, other than, well, the Coast Guard does the um, navigation and the those those type of things we can find out for you and yeah, we're going to get back to you next week john question so everybody watching this ceto foundation's on here as well um and they just put the link to the stats on there um if you copy that write that down there's some really really good information in there that's kind of eye eye-opening um 
So one wow. good one good news, the fatality rate this year of 2019 is a decrease in one decrease in 1.9%. So things are definitely moving in the right direction, um, which is which is good. Um, where the cause of death was known, 79% of fatal boating accident victims drown. Of those drowning victims reported life jacket usage, 86% were not wearing life jackets. So have your life jackets handy. You got to have them where they're you know, readily accessible. And I will tell you this too. If you're sleeping on your boat, if you're out on the hook overnight, even if you're in a slip at the marina or anything, go ahead and take those life jackets out from underneath that sea cushion wherever you have them stowed or wherever and have it sitting right next to you right on the bed. Because if it's dark and all of a sudden, you know, you step out of bed, you're in ankle deep water, the boat's sinking, mm -hmm. you're not, and you're not going to be able to, or the boat can flip anything. You've got that life jacket right there, right at the reach of your hands. It's, you know, like that could save your life, you know, and got some, you know, I've known some people that have drowned mm -hmm. in boats, commercial fishermen that, uh, you know, good close friends of mine that, you know, he didn't have, a, couldn't get a life jacket on, so. Just have them out with you ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, it's not news to anybody. Life jacket will save your life. So, it, I mean, it's it's the simple stuff, guys. Don't outsmart yourself. And and one other thing too, uh, boating safety courses. Check this out. Seventy percent of deaths occurred on boats where the operator did not receive any boating safety instruction. Only twenty percent occurred where vessels where the operator received. A national boating safety education certificate. So, Marine Max, right? We we train you all. You got the the, the go boating yeah. kit, all your safety gear. You already you got the, a leg up. You got the captain's orientation. But go ahead and take the time to take a U.S. Coast Guard auxiliary course or whatever. Here in Florida, you know, I've got these here at the store. The Boat Smart Boating Source Guides. Anybody born after January first, nineteen eighty eight has to have a driver's license now. Okay. So this book will get you that. There's a 75 question test here in the back of this book. There's a little bubble in answer sheet right in here. So glare in the sun, you can't see it. But anyway, you get the idea. You're gonna mail that off to Tallahassee and then they'll send you your safe voters ID card. So just, uh, you know, everything we can do to gain a little more knowledge and be a little more safer out there. Absolutely. Even when you're not operating the boat, let, let's talk about that guy for a minute. Okay. Don't be that guy. Right. We all know that guy. We've all met him. We've all dealt with him on our boat. Very stressful as a captain yep. to have that guy there. Um, yeah, you're babysitting. You're, you're babysitting. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell a story really quick, you know, about that guy. I was, I used to be made on a charter boat up in Cape Cod for a pretty long time. And, bachelor parties always the rowdiest right and anybody that watches you know cape cod in the past few years massachusetts knows that there's there's uh, quite a bit of white sharks hiding up there and by white sharks i mean great whites and you know if you're going to be jumping overboard in the middle of the fishing grounds then you probably might want to think twice out there but anyway we're on our way in i'm cutting fish and i'm cutting a lot of fish with charter boats you up there you can cut fish on the way in if you're a four hire vessel in florida it's a little bit different i right. think that you need to have the head and the tail intact you to bring get back to the dock or just cut the fish at the dock anyways cutting fish blowing through fish blue fish basically there's a chum line behind the boot i look back the guy is in nothing but his underwear and a bud light box over his head must have been a superhero or something and i look back and i'm like man do me a favor please don't jump Oh, he's not going to jump. He's not going to jump. Next thing you know, I hear doom, 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 doom on the cooler, on a transom, dives into the wake. Thank God that he didn't slip. Right. You know, and it's like, okay, man overboard, man overboard. We got a man overboard situation. It's not fun. It goes from being really funny for a lot of people to a lot of people really stressed out. Yep. So, all our man overboard, it's no joke. All because of that guy. So, you got any tips on man overboard situations? Well, should have your throw cushion or throw ring, right? Right there. That's why they have to be immediately accessible. Um, and also practice man overboard drills. I mean, your 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 commercial vessels all do that. 
So the mm-hmm. captains and mates and all that stuff. So the most important thing is don't lose focus of the person that went over. I mean, just stare at them. Don't look at anything else. Don't take your eyes off of them. You're hollering man overboard. The captain's going to hopefully, you know, get the boat turned around. And as the boat's turning around, you stay where you can see that person. And, uh, you know, do not, don't look away for, for anything. Hey, uh, da, 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 da. John Fitzpatrick, there's your answer. Cito coming through. New Jersey State Police take care of those for you. So, thank you. Cool. Thanks, Cito. All right. Lisa, is there an Uber for boats? Is the captain has had too much to drink and needs to leave or tow the boat home? How would we go about this? Keith, you mentioned that there is a website. I just was kind of scrolling through earlier and looking around. There's a few cities now that are starting it up. I know like Miami and Croatia and and stuff like that, that have some of your bigger towns that, you know, kind of have routes that you can hop on for a fixed fee, kind of like a taxi. Um, but uh, as far as uh, Uber, like big nationwide, a whole bunch of that stuff, probably not so much. Um, my thought on that is if you want to go out and have a good time, hire a captain, right? So they won't drink. You can go do what you want to do. They'll take you where you want. They're going to get you out and back safely. Um, just, you know, that happens that we do that a lot, you know? So there's a lot of guys that, you know, whether it's on their own boat, kind of like you're hiring a charter, you can go on theirs or they'll come on your boat and, and operate your vessel for you. There you go. Before we move into some other questions here, found a really cool link. Let's see if I can share it with you. Bear with me for a second. But six most common rumors about. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna try to do this here, Keith. Six most common rumors about alcohol and boating. So I'm gonna share the link with you really quick. How good, how, how good are you, Nick? Really quick. Bingo. All right, so I'm going to share this. Everybody can follow along with me. Pretty cool. It's like the Twilight Zone. There you go. I'm in like two places at once. <laughs> You're always in more than one place. Welcome to the future. So there you go. Six most common rumors about alcohol and boating. I found this article really useful here. Very informative for me. One, alcohol, driving alcohol while operating a boat is not a big deal. It is not as dangerous as drinking and driving in a car. I think that it's the exact opposite. Like you said, we drive and operate cars every single day. Yep. It, it, it's second nature to you. You've got highway hypnosis going on. You're not thinking of going between one point and another. You can do it in your sleep. Don't recommend it, though. Don't do it in your sleep. But, okay, it's a metaphor. So that's that. You're not driving boots every day. Also, right. you're on the water. There, there's multiple things going on. You're getting beat up anyways as it is between the waves and the sun and you're, you're swimming and stuff. You're fatigued. I think that it's it's a little – it'll sneak up on you a little bit quicker than – A lot more, a lot faster when you're in a car, especially in Florida when it, I mean, it's 100 degrees out anyways. I mean, it'll it'll be quick. So what do you do to that? Hydrate, 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 even yep. you know if you're drinking or not. I mean – uh, on another topic, when you're operating a boat, drink your water, drink your water, drink your water. And when you stop sweating, then you know you got something wrong. Stay hydrated. So, two, boats are toys meant for partying out on the water. We said it before, not a toy. You know, everything on the boat is not a toy. They're tools. Um, you know, it's going to be taken very seriously. If you ever spend any time out on the water recreationally, chances are you've either attended a floating party or witnessed one at close range. Once is pass, passage key, Agmon. Beer, beer can island. <laughs> <laughs> beer can island, there you go. Um, many people associate boats with parties, and of course, what's a party without alcohol? What are your thoughts on that? Alcohol is fine, just as long as you got somebody sober running your boat for you. Right. Three, penalties for drinking and boating are pretty lenient, and it's hard to get caught. Well... I'll tell you, if you're drunk, they'll throw you in jail. I mean, how many times have you seen it at John's Pass? Yep, absolutely. I ran Tierra Verde High and Drive for many years before I came. I've been Remax for 18. But uh, Coast Guard, FWC, would pull in there all the time, and 
get people off the boat and then they do the field sobriety test and, you know, follow the pin, walk the straight line. And next thing you know, spin them around, they're in bracelets and going off to Pinellas County Jail. So saw it, saw it a lot. There you go. Four, you're okay to drink and operate a vessel as long as it isn't powered by a motor. So I've got a canoe, right? I've got a canoe paddling all over the place. Does that mean that it's okay for me to drink a, a 12 pack of Pabst Blue Ribbon? Nope. No. You're still going to get a BUI. You're going to be lucky if you get a BUI and cut it off the jail. You're in a canoe, you're drinking that much, you're not going to have your life jacket on. You're more apt to fall out of that canoe and drown than if you're in a big yacht. And like you talked about before, eight out of 10 boaters you drowned last year were in vessels less than 21 feet long. Yep. There you go. You're going to let your guard down. Five. <laughs> BUI means boating under the influence of alcohol. You can't get in trouble for boating after smoking pot, even though it might be legal in a few states. False. BUI means boating under the influence of any intoxicant, including both legal and illegal drugs, whether it's prescriptions or whatever. You can get a BUI while under the influence of a prescribed med medication if it is determined that the medication caused operator impairment. So, you know, I know a lot of states and stuff, you know, up in Massachusetts, you know, it, they, they might have a little bit different rules, but the answer is no, you can't be going and smoking doobies and operating a vessel <laughs> if, if it means that you're you're under the influence. So if you're impaired whatsoever, it does not just mean alcohol, common mis misconception. And six, going for a swim from an anchored boat after a few drinks is a good idea. Well, that's like we talked about earlier. You're swimming around in the water. Stay hydrated. Be careful, especially in the salt water. It might sneak up on you. You know, especially when you're getting thrown beer after beer after beer from the boat, keep that ticker going. But, you know, most people watching us, they're, they're grown people. You know, we can only tell you that so much, but just be smart because it's yeah. not it's not your life all the time. It's somebody else's life that you're jeopardizing. Right. I mean, you put somebody else in a bad situation, too. So, like, the guy that dove off that boat on your charter boat, right? It's all fun and games. But now the captain's got somebody overboard mm -hmm. but you got to fish out of the water hopefully you're getting you know you're trying to get him a life ring you're trying to get him back boarded up in the boat um there's you know there was a few years ago over at shell island there was a boat that was out there that had some people on it and they were just you know they were partying and it was a charter and i believe it was probably a illegal charter but i won't go into all that you know they had all the proper paperwork but they were diving off the bow and the current was ripping. It was a rough, windy day and they're diving off the bow, getting sucked back to the transom and just kind of doing loops like that. Right. Well, all of a sudden somebody started struggling and he didn't make it back to the transom of the boat. So the mate dove in the water after the guy that was struggling and they both drowned. So don't put yourself. Luckily, you didn't dive in after the guy. You know, no, no. get your throw ring, get your throw raft you know, whatever it is you got and, you know, toss it out of there and get the boat turned around and go back and get them. But, you know, don't put yourself in that, that situation. It's like a, a diver, right? If you're down there diving with a buddy and they run out of oxygen, they run out of air in their tank, you know, you're taught to not let go of your regulator, right? You're going to share it. You're going to breathe it, but I'm not going to hand that person my regulator because they're going to be freaking out. They're going to be hanging on to that. And you can end up drowning because you can't get your regulator back. And not a lot of a lot of people now have the octopus rigs or you got spares. But when I was growing up diving, we didn't have that. But you you know you got taught buddy breathing, and you know you held on to that regulator, you know, like it was your life, which it is, you know. So you you share that way. Um, and then we were talking about the the blood alcohol content. So like driving in a car here in Florida is 0.08. Same thing on the boat. In those statistics on the USCG boating, this is interesting too. That this the the factor how much it jumps. So the result of factors of the sun, the bouncing around, the noise, your your body going through all the stressors, right? When you had alcohol on top of it. I mean, you you know how it is, anyways. When you're running boats, at the end of the day, you're you're beat, tired, right? You're cooked. So a boat operator with a blood alcohol concentration of 0 0.10 percent is estimated to be more than 10 times as likely to die in a boating accident than an operator with zero blood alcohol concentration. Yeah. So it goes from zero to 10 times 
the amount. So once you have those two or three beers and you're at that 0 0.08, 0 0.10. And you might not even realize it because you've got so much stuff going on. you got a 10 time likelier swing of, of, of drowns. So it's, you know, we're all adults. It's all common sense. So just, you know, be smart about it, folks. I'm going to bring up another point here. Keith, why do people say, a lot of charter guys especially, no glass bottles on board? Because glass breaks, right? Yep. And then what happens? So then glass, glass breaks, breaks, and then you bleeding. then you step on a piece of glass, and you got glass in your foot, and then you're bleeding all over the deck, and then you're getting your first aid kit out, and then your day's ruined. Um, so no glass, red wine too, right? A lot of our yachts and stuff will have, you know, if we're doing events or you got people, we'll do the, you know, the white wine stuff like that in plastic cups if, 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 if you, awesome. if you, no if red you, wine because it'll stain if you think that sunscreen will ruin your upholstery yeah try spilling some red wine yeah <laughs> in a hurry so but i mean there's, there's all sorts of things but i mean i think at the end of the day keith it, it just comes down to using common sense be smart if i could leave one point of advice whoever's driving a boot i mean we talk about what's the legal limit what's the legal limit 0.08 0.08 set somebody aside to be at point zero 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 yep I agree. and then you just you eliminate so many variables right there you're not thinking oh can i drive can i get pulled over what's going on am i gonna get in trouble take turns Boom. right off the bat take turns yeah. right there's a bunch of us we, you, that you fish with all the time right you know you're going out you're gonna red snapper bites on fire right now gag group or scamp i mean every, everybody's lighting it up right tuna sailfish everything's going on up the golf right now right mm -hmm. So, you know, you leave out, you know, you got the, the beers are in the cooler and all that stuff, but the captain of the boat of that day, the guy that's in charge, you know, has zero. When he gets back, then have at it. You know, the boat's back on the lift, you're back at the house, you're in the pool, you're cleaning fish, you know, yeah. then, then, then enjoy the day, you know. I mean, I, I made a joke with um, one of the boats that I usually run the other day when we were coming back from this Longboat Key. Boot ties in, shut the engines off. I said, you know what that means, right? Now you can have a beer. Yep. And even one. I mean, it's just it's principle, especially you know as a captain and stuff. Like when if you're getting paid to run boots, I mean that's just about the most zero tolerance thing that I can think of. It has to be. And yeah. and that's the reason. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, plan ahead. So if you you know you're going on a dinner date, you're going on a cruise, you got friends or whatever, hire a captain. Put somebody on the boat, and then you can sit back and relax and enjoy the evening with your wife or, you know, whatever, whoever, all the, the group of friends you got with you. Just, uh, you know, get somebody to run the boat for you. I mean, it's fun. I mean, this is recreation. This is boating. We're all doing it for fun. So you might as well have a good time. I mean, I, I know for all the work events and stuff that we do, you know, I'm always the first one to volunteer. Hey. Yeah, all of us are. Yes, yeah. you know. Not, not, not going to drink whatsoever, but you know, it is what it is. Do you have any tips on handling tipsy passengers? Yeah. Get in front of it. You know, you, if, if you're the sober guy on the boat, you're the captain, you're the master of that vessel. You're the one that needs to take responsibility and say, Hey, listen, I, I can see a situation before it happens. Chill yeah. out. You see it coming and chill you, out. You put an end to it <laughs> or the charter's over and we're going back to the dock and, and we're done. Yeah. You know? So, and then that's how that guy will ruin it for everybody. Don't be that guy, like you said. Right there. Um, any other questions on here? Land in the graph. I know someone familiar with red wine on yachts. Well, tell them to be careful. What do you got there, Keith, on your uh, first mate checklist? So, so through the Sober Skipper, Cito Silver Skipper Foundation and stuff like that. There's uh, there's all kinds of stuff in there. So when you take the pledge, you know, we're talking about the wristbands, you know, they've got little, they've got checklists on here. They got Toby. They got some fun little coloring books and like mazes and stuff for the kids to keep the, the kids entertained. And uh, just uh, there's all kinds of different ways you can go through and just have a nice little checklist here and and all that so you know make sure you got your life jackets where you make sure your fire extinguishers charged up you know the flares are good you know double check your navigation lights make sure your vhf radio is working check the builds very important look down in there before you take off check the gas gauge fuel gauge make sure you got enough fuel to get where you're going right check the weather make sure you got sunblock 
So there's just quick little things. So if you got, you know, your your boys, your girls, your grandkids or whatever, you can get them involved. They can go through this little checklist and check things off with you as, as you're going along. So cool. I mean, I, I, I hate to be the Debbie Downer and, you know, tell That's, everybody not to, but I, I mean, know. it is very real, especially when you're getting in the summertime and here, everybody's out on the water. I mean, you know, with us being in Clearwater and St. Pete, it's, you know, there's a million people out on the water, so it's kind of, you know, I mean, Fourth of July weekend coming up, you know, last year, I think it was Fourth of July or Labor Day here in Pinellas County. I know of like four different boating fatalities that happened that, you know, totally or boating. No, the boating accidents, alcohol related. And I know one for sure, you know, fatality. Um, but it's just, you know, slow down going through bridges. I'm going to preach that forever. Just because you can doesn't mean you should on that stuff. So um, those no wake zones, those signs there are, are there for a reason. It's a blind spot. You don't know what's around the corner. Got another question here, Keith. Do you? Oh, where are we? Where was it? What do you do if you see reckless behavior on other boats? I mean, we see it like, for instance, like like we talked about it, not being in control of what other people are doing on your boats, on their boats, right? You know, like. And when I when I do a gas grill pirate invasion, I mean that's just the first thing that comes into mind. And everybody out there, um, do you have any tips on just kind of steering clear or whatever? But if you notice though, like say Gasparilla, I mean the, the word's getting out, right? I mean look how calm they are now compared to what they used to be, you know, years ago, right? You know, from you know throwing stuff and and just you know, I mean the the, the BUIs, you know, are, are way down on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, people are, are taking it a lot more responsibly, you know, and that's just that's just a whole new, you know, good way that that everything seems to be moving here. Um, but what you ask me on the as far as as far as if you see something going on, seeing you know something going mean? on, steer clear early to early and substantial, right? Right, steer clear. I mean, if it's it's if it's blatant, if it's really bad, you know, you've got a VHF radio, you get on channel 16, you can call the Coast Guard, call the FWC or whoever the your Marine Patrol is uh, in your area. And, uh, you know, see if there's somebody around, let them know, because even if they don't, you know, do damage or hurt themselves, they can hurt somebody else, right? I mean, you know, you run into a dock or run somebody over or, or anything like that. So, yeah. Not good, but I mean, with that being said, we're going to lighten up the mood a little bit next week. Going to be talking about boating at night. So, Keith, you got any 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 preview tips that we're going to be covering? Get to know your electronics, right? right? Not when you need your electronics, right? Um, you know, it's a nice, beautiful day sitting here. We're sitting in front of this window, looking out over Allen's Creek right here. And today's the day you should be out on the water, learning how to use your radar learning how to use your chart plotter. If you've got overlay and a heading sensor, you know, do that. Um, your vision at night, you know, is, is obviously a lot different than the daytime, but uh, your depth perception is a lot different. Um, so you can't distinguish, you know, reds and greens and this and that. So just practicing with your electronics is the main thing. Going slow. Don't outrun your coverage, right? So I mean, you got to be able to be able to stop when you when you're moving along. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, even when you're trusting electronics and stuff. I mean, on your chart, you're not going to have a, you know, that that railroad time that's floating through the shipping lanes is not going to be marked. Right. So it just heads up. But we'll we'll cover all of that. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great questions with that episode because I mean, just being able to boat at night. I mean, no pun intended, is going to expand your horizon so much further. You know, it's going to extend your boating days and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. it's a little different ball game at night. We're talking about alcohol and boating, especially, 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 especially. That's when you really need a sober skipper because it's all hands on deck. Yep. It's there's you know I mean we can sit here and talk and preach and stuff like that, but I mean. I'm no saint, I'm no angel, right? I mean, I've years ago, I mean, years ago and stuff like that. I mean, I've experienced that the alcohol, the nighttime, running aground, spent the night out there on a sandbar in the middle of the night, woke up in the middle of the morning with a bunch of people walking around the boat, clamming, like, you know, what the heck's going on here? You know, I mean, stupid stuff that, you know, we we're, you know, I was lucky. 
and uh, you know we've all done it, but we're just trying to have a few less people, you know, do that. So, um, if if through this boating broadcast today, it takes one person, only one person out of the thousands out on the water to not be a fool and not hurt somebody else or themselves, then I'd say that it was worth it. Absolutely. So, with that being said, Keith, thanks. You gonna sign off here? We'll sign us off. Don't forget to. Shoot us a like, a follow, a share, you name it, whatever it is, a tweet. I don't tweet. And uh, and I'll see you guys next week. Yeah. So Check out BoatingSafety.com. CETO Foundation is putting up a lot of good information on here for these first make checklists, how to get a, the, your child's right size life jacket and stuff on here. So BoatingSafety.com, a lot of stuff's right there. Go to SoberSkipper.com. Take the pledge. Be safe. See you guys out on the water. I guess bye.